Well, good morning. Yes, uh, yeah, hey, it's on. We're, we're past time to start, which is kind of our forte. Well, we're going to begin and worship the Lord this morning. Um, this, this first song, I just, just so you know, it's, it's another one of those repeating songs. The chorus kind of repeats over and over and over again. But I think some of you guys will still appreciate it. And uh, let's stand. Good morning. Good morning. Is this a glorious day or what? Yes. We live in the, the best place in the world. Amen. Don and I, Don will affirm this. This is one step from heaven here. Yeah. And uh, aren't we privileged to live in such a place? As we were singing, I don't know why, but it, it came to mind um, long ago in a faraway place. That's a good way to start a story. Um, but it's true, uh, and really, in today's world, not so far. Um, a man died, and this big curtain split, and we have access to God. Yes. We have access to God. This is my story. This is my song, and so here we are, and we can go to God personally, and he knows us. Isn't that great? What a thought. What a thought. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for such a beautiful day. We appreciate the sunshine and the clear skies, and we love life because you have given that to us. And so we have come into this place today, your house, to worship you individually, um, in our own way and corporately together we praise you and we worship you and we commit ourselves and this place and this time to you to have your way with us so would you move in this place move in us and through us and change us and make us into what you want us to be this day and in the days ahead we thank you for the whites and bringing them to us safely, and, and uh, we ask that as they settle in, that they would get a, so, a strong sense of your presence and your continued help. Bless them today, especially, we pray. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for who we are. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, just, just so you guys do know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're all aware, but we do have new pastors this morning. And I, 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 I Pastor Kyle's going to get up in a little bit and preach, but so be, be in, a, in a while. We got, we got to sing some more first. But I wanted to introduce them real quick, just so that we can, you have to have official introduction, because that's it. And so we have Pastor Kyle and Pastor Valerie White. And in case you don't know, we have two pastors, not just one. Okay. And then I'll, I'll, I will, I'll try to get the, get the boys in there from age on down, because we're all going to forget for a while. So we have Grayson and Peyton and Braden and awesome Candon right there. So get to know them, and you're not going to be able to help but to get to know them. We spent uh, most of yesterday with them and uh, had a good time. Me and, me and the boys put a bunch of stuff together in the house and trashed the place real well, so I'm sure they spent a lot of time getting it all put back together last night. But uh, it's good. It, we're, we're, we're living in a culture today that's really chaotic, would probably be the, the best word, just chaos. Um, 
whether it's this COVID thing that there really isn't an answer to, whether it's our political climate that there really isn't an answer to, uh, whether it's the economics that there really isn't an answer to, there, there are some things that if, if you get on, on social media of any sort whatsoever, the, the one dominating principle of all is fear. Fear about COVID, fear about politics, fear about economy, fear about health, fear, you just name it, and the overarching thing is fear. So what do we do? One thing that we, we, we are told is the joy of the Lord is our strength. And we do have weapons to fight fear. And you need to understand that the number one weapon for fear is singing. This next song, one of the lines in there says, my weapon is a melody. And it, 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 this song is it's, it's now one of my most favorite songs. <laughs> Last week we sang my other most favorite song. Next week we'll probably sing another most favorite song. I, I've, I've, I never knew this as a principle, but it's been, it's been what I've done my entire life is sing throughout the day or whistle. Usually, usually I can't, I'm too busy working that I can't get all the words out, so I whistle instead. But you, you cannot be anxious, you cannot be in fear while you're singing. You just can't. And there's just something about that. And as a Christian, we know good and well we have reason to sing and reason to worship and reason to be excited about life. This is a great life. It's the only one we have. And we have great reason to be excited about this life in the culture and conditions that we're in. We really do. And when we find ourselves getting down just a little bit, just remember, your weapon is a melody. And just sing.
You can be seated. This, this next song is a new one. I, I need to preface that so that you don't have to worry about not knowing the words because a lot of you won't. And, and, and if there are several of you who should be listening to Christian radio, you will know this song. It's in my father's house. Um, if, if you know it, you can sing along with it. If you don't, listen to the words of it because you're going to want to know this song. It's, it's one that, it's, it's the reason why we gather together Sunday mornings. And, and this, this building itself is not the Father's house. This group of people right here is the Father's house. And in the Father's house, there is no shame. In the Father's house, there is no fear. In the Father's house, there, is, there aren't any people who we do not know and love. Because it's really awesome in the Father's house. So enjoy this song. Learn this song. Because it's singing about us, the Father's house. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength And my story isn't over, my story's just begun And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does Yeah, failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does
Welcome to the Father's house. It's good to be a part of it. I, I, I mentioned last week about the importance of music, of the songs that... I, I really believe that the, that the Christian songwriters are God's prophets of today. That he is teaching us through music. He always has. Um, what, as, a, as a kid, what was, what was, I don't know about you guys, but for me, my, my favorite book in the Bible was Psalm. You go through all the different Psalms, especially, you know, maybe it's because in VBS you learn, you learn a million of them, have to memorize them and all that. And those, and those they rhyme so well, they're the easiest ones to memorize because they were songs. Um, and yet there's something about songs that, that just bring things back to memory. Um, this, this song, we heard it here the first, for the first time a couple, it's probably a year ago, a year and a half ago, something like that. And I, I was having a Sunday morning where I, you know, I get a little cynical. Um, that's just kind of me sometimes. I, I don't seem to be, but I, I am. And just one of those mornings, I, just, I was just, I was tired of just new songs. We need some of the old stuff. I know none of you guys are ever like that. You, you don't want the old stuff. You just want the new, new stuff. And all of a sudden, I'm looking down the list of what we're singing in this, in this song. I hadn't even heard it before. I'd never heard this song before. But I was teaching one of the Sunday school classes, and we were, we were talking about, about uh, new life and, and what it actually is like to walk in the Spirit, what it's actually like to walk with God, and what, you know, what, what difference does it make in our life. And I was frustrated when this song came on because you know, there were some other ones I really was hoping that they would have picked because we, we had been singing some that really were going to fit what we're going to be talking about. And I thought, this, you know, why don't we do this one? And all of a sudden, this song comes up. And, and the words of this is, Alone in my sorrow and dead in my sin, lost without hope with no place to begin. Your love made a way to let mercy come in when death was arrested and my life began. And it really hit me, this, the words of that, just the last line, when death was arrested and my life began. Because it's interesting, one of, the, one of the things that Jesus said that, that we really don't pay attention to so much, he says, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly, to the full. He said that to a bunch of people who were alive. But they really weren't. They weren't really living. They were not living the life of God. Jesus said, I have come that you may live the life of God and live that life to the full. And we were all dead, dead in our sorrow and dead in our sin. And the question that I was asked when we first sung that song was, when was death arrested in my life? And when did I finally start living the life of God? I can guarantee you, I, I, I came to Christ when I was four years old at my grandma's house. I, remember, I still remember that. I didn't start living the life of God then. I walked down the aisle 47 times as a teenager, and I wasn't living the life of God then. When my grandson was born, God showed me his mercy and his grace in a way that I actually really knew that he loved me. And the death I've been living was arrested. And my life really began seven years ago. I know it then. I've been a Christian for so long, and yet I wasn't living the life of God where joy was constant, and he was my constant companion. So I'm asking you as we sing this song, when was death arrested for you, and when did your life begin? Or maybe it's time to start. I'll take this off for a second. Um, we went through a couple states that we're actually supposed to be quarantining completely from. We were very careful, um, but we wanted to give it a couple weeks before we took off the masks, and we promise we will <laughs> in a couple weeks. We just want to make sure none of us are carrying anything. We want to protect you guys. Um, let's pray before Pastor Kyle comes up to bring us God's word this morning. Lord Jesus, we love you and we praise you. We thank you so much for giving us your son. Um, 
There are just so many words we can say um, to show the depth of our gratitude and thankfulness for what you've done for us, Lord. And so we quietly lift our hearts and our voices to you, sometimes loudly, sometimes with no words at all. And we let you know that we love you, Lord, and we praise you, and that's why we're here this morning. Be with Pastor Kyle as he brings your word this morning. I pray that your Holy Spirit will move in the hearts and the lives of uh, the people of the church here, Lord. We are so thankful, God, as a family, to be here. Um, We're thankful for the love and the hugs and the smiles and the excitement, Lord. And we just pray that that will bubble over to speak to your people that you want us to reach in this community. We love you, Jesus, and in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Am I on? No. Okay, there we go. Well, we are excited to be here. And when we came, I wanted to say, wow, We're glad to be home. We're very excited. It was a long journey, four long days of travel with one, only one rest day in there with family. And let me tell you, when you put all of us together in two vehicles, that's a journey in itself. Um, Just try to stay sane together. (laughs) So again, we're, we're glad to be home and we are Uh, excited to be your pastors and your pastoral family. Um, When I was growing up, uh, being a Bears fan, a Chicago Bears fan, I used to watch Monday Night Football. And I remember the way that they started with the show. It was Hank Williams Jr., and he sang a song, and it was, Are You Ready for Some Football? Um, If the Bears were playing... Uh, We would be waiting, anticipating the game. Usually they lost, but there was time beforehand that there was always that possibility that they might play well enough um, to win. Anticipation and lead up. We are, again, excited to be here, and there's something special about anticipation that leads up to a moment and to a time. So let's, let's talk a little bit about that time that's the lead up before. There's a term for that time, and it's called liminal space, okay? The word liminal comes from the Latin word meaning lemon, not spelled L-I-M-N, okay? It's spelled differently, meaning a threshold, okay? Any point or place of entering or beginning. A liminal space is the time between of what was and the next. It is a place of transition, a season of waiting and not knowing. If you are in a liminal space, you're probably dealing with change of some kind. Okay, moving into a new town, check, yep. Um, Some of us, financial strain. Some of us, uh, in a loss. Life disconnect. An empty nest. A new health diagnosis. Or retirement. Just to name a few places where you can be in liminal space. Whatever the change, it's a seismic shift for you, and the future seems uncertain. You as a church have been in a liminal space. Pastor Valerie and I, we have been in a liminal space. These times can be scary, nervous, and sometimes stressful. When we face major changes, most of us, if we're honest, we don't know who to become or how to navigate ahead. We often miss the real potential 
of that in-between place. We either stand paralyzed or we flee quickly anything to avoid the discomfort that is that liminal space. I believe that if you approach a season of change with intention and help others and the help of others, you can boldly approach it confidently, moving forward into your future. We, as a church, are very thankful for Pastor John and Debbie, and they have helped Lakeside through this time of liminal space. But today, today we enter a new space. Amen. And we get to leave that liminal space behind us together. So on Friday, we were traveling and just, I was getting to the point, I, I, told, I told Dave that, hey, I'm going to preach. <laughs> and it's, okay. And my wife said, you're crazy. <laughs> I said, oh, I think I know that. And as we got to traveling, and I still hadn't really felt what God wanted me to say, I was working, and, and I knew that there was this time between. But God woke me up at 4 o'clock in the morning on Friday as we had traveled. And that doesn't usually happen for me where God wakes me up, but he did. And he said this to me, he said, are you ready and willing to do what God has called you to do? Amen. Whoa. <laughs> I had to wake up and I had to write that down. So I did. Many people have lived into that statement. Noah lived in that statement, right? God called him and called on him to build an ark. It hadn't even rained, but yet... Noah was faithful. Abraham was promised by God to have descendants as numerous as the stars. But then God asked him to sacrifice his son. He was living into this statement, right? Because Abraham was faithful. Our text this morning is in Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 through 18. So if you want to take your Bible or your phone... Um, and before we read that, I, want to, I remember that when we came and interviewed, that we concluded our sermon with Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. As I started seeking what God would lay on my heart, I noticed that the Philippian text was in my weekly devotionals as the Sunday text for today. There is the time between again that liminal space, even between when we interviewed to today. And when I saw that text, I said, God, you are amazing. You put that text next. Okay, in Paul's letter, remember that he had talked about that we should have the same mindset of Christ. And then it leads on to say in verses 12 through 18, it says, therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that, they, that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like the stars in the skies as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain. But even if I am being poured out like a drink offering on, on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Paul and the Philippian church, they in some ways were in that liminal space. He had been there and he was writing to them. And it was this time where um, 
They had sent someone to send him a financial and probably food and financial thing where he was in prison and they sent somebody to come and be, give an offering to him as he was in prison. And so then he wrote back to them. And inside of that, it was a time of thankfulness in seeing that time that was between. It was exciting for him because Paul, if you, if you look at Paul's life, he saw it as living out being Christ. The Messiah had come, but he got to be Christ to others that were around him. In this space, though, he was in, in jail. So his opportunities was to write letters and to write thankfulness and praises. And he, um, he then went on to say inside of it, he said, either I'm here and I pass away or I get to see you again. But either way, Christ be glorified. And so he kind of lived out that liminal space. Today, we start a new chapter together. So as God had told me that, are you ready and willing to do what God has called you to do? I think we should see it this way. Are we ready and willing to do what God has called us to do? In Psalm chapter 86, uh, at, starting at verse 11, it says this. Um, I'm going to change the context here because it says I, but I'm going to change the context to us because we are together. And if, if you would, Psalm 86 would be a great psalm to read through the week this week. Um, but it's in, starting in verse 11, it says this, Teach us your way, Lord, that we may rely on your faithfulness. Give us an undivided heart that we may fear your name. We will praise you, Lord, our God. With all of our hearts, we will glorify your name forever. For great is your love towards us. If you don't know of this love today, Pastor Valerie and I would love to talk with you more about what that love means. And how God loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for your sins. And then he conquered. He conquered the grave and he conquered sin and he rose again. Now, if you already know of this love, are you ready? Are you ready for what God wants to do in your life and in our lives together as a family. Yep. Let's pray. Lord, today we find life, health, and strength. And through your mercy, we are clothed and fed. Please give us a thankful and faithful heart to go forward into this new chapter together as Lakeside Nazarene. It is your glory and your honor that we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Today, this is what I have. I know it's not long, and sometimes that's the way that I like to be. I want to be to the point. When God gives me a word and he wakes me up in the middle of the night, I say that word, and I want to be faithful. Pastor Valerie and I are excited to be here. So today, I want you to go in his peace, ready to be Christ to others today. You're dismissed. Oh. Not quite yet. <laughs>
You're good. Oh, I just got a quick announcement. Oh. Um, next week, we, ha we haven't done this for six, eight months now just because of, we got busy in last September and then, and then COVID hit this March and we haven't done alabaster in a long time. And I know you guys are saving up all your pennies and coins Sweet. and all that. And so we're doing it next week, next Sunday. So Wonderful. bring bring your boxes and bring your stuff. Um, we take checks and cash and, and, and all that stuff as well. Um, and if you're not familiar with what alabaster is in the Nazarene church, every, every single Nazarene church throughout the world does this and they collect, it's just your loose change that you can get Put a little box on your dresser and take your loose change out. And throughout the year and twice a year, they pull this all together. And 100% of every single penny goes into the mission field for, for buying land or building hospitals. or, or just. And there's no overhead at all covering that. So right. this, this is a way that a little church like ours contributes and is all added together. And it, it literally creates millions of dollars of opportunity sure. for building the kingdom. Yes. And so we're doing that next week. Wonderful. Um, also... We still have bills to pay, and so just just so you just don't forget, we're the offering plates are just in the back. Just we're not we're not passing we're not trying to pass COVID, so we're not passing offering plates, but they're still right there. So if you need to, um, just drop it in. Well, if we need you to, just drop it in right there. <laughs> and that's that's well, all I had. Blessings. Oh, also there's a whole. Um, if you we are doing a food pounding for these guys because Kyle's just withering away. On the way over here, we want to make sure they had plenty, so there's stuff, and if you brought stuff, just throw it in the back here, in the corner, Wonderful. and we'll Thank you. get that as well. And uh, st stay, stick around a while, get to know all these guys. Yeah. These, these guys are fun. We'll get, we'll, you're, you'll learn to like Kyle. <laughs> Valerie's easy to love. Kyle, you just got to learn to, learn, to, <laughs> learn to like him. These, these four guys will keep you on your toes. So get to know them sure. and love on them and just enjoy the, the morning. All right. Wonderful.